Welcome traders to another Tickmill Earnings Report Preview with me Patrick Munderley. Before we jump into today's report, as always we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. The material provided is for information purposes only and should not be considered as investment advice. The views, information and opinions expressed by me are solely mine and they're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. Okay, let's jump into today's report. We are looking at Salesforce. Earnings per share of 94 cents. Uh, noteworthy that represents a 22% fall from uh, the prior 12 months. We're looking at revenue of 7.4 billion. Uh, Salesforce uh, reportedly has slowed hiring as it looks to curb expenses. It's particularly noteworthy given CRM's recent focus on margin expansion as the firm guided to a 20% operating margin in the fiscal 2023 versus 18.7% in the 2022 period. The enterprise software maker has dropped the .com from its legal name. The name change from Salesforce.com to Salesforce Inc. took effect April 4th. The company continues to trade as CRM stock. Salesforce said it expects fiscal 2023 revenue in a range of 31.65 billion to 31.8 billion versus estimates of 31.52 billion. In addition, Chief Financial Officer Amy Weaver uh, committed to higher margins. Including recently acquired Slack technology, Salesforce fourth quarter earnings fell 19% to 84 cents on an adjusted basis. Revenue climbed 26% to 7.33 billion, including 312 million from Slack. The enterprise software maker said current remaining uh, performance obligations or CRPO bookings rose 22% to 22 billion. That topped analyst estimates of 21.42 billion. Meanwhile, CRPO bookings are an aggregate of deferred revenue and other order backlog. For the current quarter ending in April, Salesforce revenue outlook topped expectations. The soft where make uh, expect revenue in the range of 7.37 billion to 7.38 billion uh, versus the estimate of 7.4 billion. There is actually a whisper number on the street that the EPS print could be as high as 97 cents a share. Let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns around uh, Salesforce earnings releases. CRM shares have moved higher in the immediate aftermath of earnings, 6 out of 12 previous reports. On average, the stock moved up 0.6% in the first day of trading after its earnings release. Based upon the previous 12 earnings releases, CRM is more likely to trade higher one day after earnings for an average gain of 0.3%. On average, the stock has moved lower by 0.3% one week after earnings. In terms of implied volatility and what the options market is pricing, options traders see an 8.6% move on earnings. However, the stock has only averaged a 5.9% move in recent quarters. Looking at flow and sentiment here, uh, there's been a notable buyer of 1,653 contracts of the $170 call expiring this Friday. Options order flow of sentiment in general though has been bearish. Investor sentiment going into the company's earnings release has a 64% expectancy of an earnings beat. CRM share price has drifted down 21.5% post its last earnings announcement. Using the last 12 quarters of data, the average drift between earnings announcements is actually 2.8%. Let's pull up a, uh, a chart here and we can take a look at the technicals and see where there may be a near-term opportunity from a trading perspective. We have put in a base here around the $154 level. Um, notable bullish momentum divergence has occurred. And this is uh, broadly in line with the markets which have been experiencing a, uh, a relief rally, uh, corrective upside move uh, currently. So for me at this stage, if we can take out the 168 level on the upside, then I would be targeting a move up into the trend channel resistance at the 182.45 level. As pullbacks remain supported back into the 169, then we could look for a similar bounce uh, corrective move that we saw during the um, beginning, uh, sorry, late February to uh, mid-March. So that would take us up into the $190 level. So that would be my upside target if we can get through that, uh, that 170 level. And that's when that call would obviously um, come into play as well. So that's the upside setup if uh, if we can get that move. However, if we do see a, a miss and, uh, and disappointment, 
then any closing breach of this uh, 154 level should see us down targeting 143, 142. And then whilst that 154 then acts as resistance on the upside, I'd actually have a downside target into the 121 level and the projected uh, trend channel support coming in just below there at the 116 handle. As always traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.